You might be under the impression that pinup models have quite the life. They're beautiful, glamorous, and have the entire world at their fingertips, right? Well, that couldn't be further from the truth for many pinup models. Take a look behind those sultry smiles and you'll discover many of the world's most prestigious pinups had some pretty awful life stories. Their tragic stories are tales full of torrid themes like mental and physical abuse, intense childhood traumas, loveless marriages, drugs and alcohol, and sadly, as was the case for many of these women, an untimely death. Let's take a candid look behind the glamorous shells that many of these famous faces hid behind to see what their lives were really like. Hollywood's favorite fawn. Hedy Lamarr emerged into the world in 1914 as Hedwig Eva Keisler. According to the National Women's History Museum, Lamarr, from an early age, was blessed with an incredibly sharp scientific mind. But from early on, her father and her mother encouraged her to pursue a career in the arts. When she was 18 years old, she was featured in a controversial film called Ecstasy, where she stripped down and showed off her birthday suit. It was so controversial, in fact, it was later banned by both Adolf Hitler and Pope Pius XII. Appearing in that film, in addition to starring in a play called Sissy, helped her steal the attention of an Austrian arms dealer named Fritz Mandel, whom she would eventually marry. The marriage started off well, but quickly crumbled into a miserable situation. She fled to Paris, first hoping to escape the confines of her abusive husband. She would later make the move to the U.S. to do the same. While there, she had a chance encounter with MGM's Louis B. Meyer, which helped her kick off her career. But she always wanted something more. She once famously said that any girl can be glamorous. All you have to do is stand still and look stupid. And while she said that in jest, there was some truth to her words that she desperately wanted to grow beyond. Lamar expanded her skill set, making use of her intelligence. She once convinced billionaire mogul Howard Hughes that airplane wings should be angled backwards and invented her own guidance system for torpedoes. Sadly, she never received any recognition or compensation for those inventions during her life. By the late 50s, her career was in a freefall, and by 1965, she was a regular target of the tabloid's ruthless headlines. She passed away in 2000, 85 years old, having lived in seclusion for years. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like, and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. And don't go anywhere just yet. Stay tuned to find out what tragic fate befell the queen of pinup models. The Blonde Bombshell By the time she turned 22, Jean Harlow was already one of the most famous female faces on the planet. At first, it was just her looks she was known for. It wasn't until after she had a run-in with MGM executive Paul Byrne that she got the opportunity to be a serious actress. But their relationship was about more than just business, and in 1932, they were married. The marriage was not destined to last, and just two months later, a household staff member discovered his body. The cause of death was determined to be a gunshot. As MGM tried to cut off all the rampant rumors surrounding his demise, it came out that Byrne actually had another wife other than Harlow. He had previously tied the knot to Dorothy Millett, an actress who had been committed to a sanitarium on the East Coast. After hearing of his death, which was ruled a suicide, Millett decided to follow in his footsteps by taking her own life. Harlow later remarried and later got divorced, but there was something far more devastating in her life than a couple of failed marriages. In 1937, while she was shooting the film Saratoga, she suddenly fainted. What started off as flu-like symptoms eventually led to blindness, and just one week later, she died of kidney failure the OG Hollywood child star. The Wall Street Journal once called her the first lady of striptease, but she wasn't just the most famous stripper in the world. She was a quintessential part of the American mythos. The Guardian referred to her act as pure American art. Most folks knew her as Gypsy Rose Lee, but she was born Louise Havoc. She probably wouldn't have had the career she did if it wasn't for her mother, Rose. Although she routinely made condescending remarks about her daughter as being talentless and as excess baggage, she still forced her to sing and dance for her her at dinner time alongside her little sister June. When June was 16, she decided enough was enough and ran away, leaving behind her sister Louise to essentially fend for herself. By that time, it was the 1930s, and the vaudeville stage they had relied upon for years to pay the bills was quickly fading. So Rose started booking her daughter into seedy burlesque theaters, instructing her if she wanted to make a decent living, she had to get naked. Keep in mind, she was 17. Once she had rebranded herself as Gypsy Rose Lee, her fame and popularity skyrocketed rocketed. But her turbulent relationship with her mother was always difficult. It was such a complicated arrangement that to this day, no one is quite sure which of her claims were real or not. She passed away at 59 after being diagnosed with cancer. She even referred to her ailment as a present from mother. 
Queen of the Pinups. When the New York Times reported on Betty Page's demise in 2008, they referred to her as the Queen of Pinups. She lived a full life and died at age 85. But even though her image had seen a bit of resurgence in popularity in the years prior to her death, her metaphorical son had said a long time ago, in 1957 to be precise. That was the year, during the height of her career, that she completely ghosted from the public eye. In her obituary, you can read letters that she and her sister Goldie exchanged shed light on her problems that were left out of the media back then. She described several episodes where she experienced full-on mental breakdowns, and she detailed symptoms that seemed to indicate she dealt with something akin to schizophrenia. As she grew older, she had to deal with the crippling effects of worsening arthritis, occasionally making headlines for her loud, public, and violent outbursts, and was committed to mental health facilities on several occasions. In 1972, a judge declared her not guilty by reason of insanity after she supposedly attacked her landlord and threatened to kill him with a knife. She also struggled with her weight and figure. Some of that probably had to do with all the antipsychotic medications she was prescribed. Later on in life, she made some startling admissions about her early years, including accusing her father of molesting her and her sisters when they were kids. She would also refuse to be photographed in the last few decades of her life. She claimed she wanted to be remembered as she was when she was young in her golden times when tragedy becomes a pop culture mythology. Jane Mansfield was a blonde bombshell with a heart of gold, but she also had quite a few skeletons in the closet. When she was beheaded in a tragic traffic accident, she was permanently cemented as a central figure in a very grisly chapter of Hollywood history. Jim Roberts, the undertaker responsible for reconstructing Mansfield's face and body before she was laid to rest, told the New York Times that her head was still attached at the time of her death. Even so, he admits that what happened to her was about as bad as it gets in his line of business. The beheading detail was added to the story by journalists, who caught a glimpse of her wig being thrown from the vehicle after colliding with the back of a tractor trailer. The official cause of the accident was determined to be truck spraying mosquito repellent that covered everything in her field of view in a dense, blurry fog. Roberts is still baffled by the way that pop culture gets her story wrong. Hoping to salvage her reputation, he notes she was a devoted mother who couldn't stand to be away from her kids. On the night she took her last breath, they were all right there in the back seat of her car. Fortunately, they all survived. But you can imagine the psychological and mental toll it's taken on them having seen their mother's brutal death. Now it's time to hear from you. In the comment section below, let us know whether you'd rather be a pinup star or an actor, and let us know why. Before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.